All right. Y'all glad to be here? Okay. Looking forward to Sundays. Looking forward to Sundays to be here. Amen. All right. Well, once they get my document up, we will begin. There we go. AdamandBeliever.com forward slash. We still in love him. Y'all been enjoying this series? I think this series is very uh, appropriate for the time that we're in. It's very needed. Um, because right now we're all being um, tested. Our faith is being tested. What we're going to believe is being tested. Amen? Amen? Amen. And let me tell you this, please, y'all. Understand the end times. Okay? Understand that in the end times, there's going to be false prophecies. Quit looking at every prophecy that come across your feed and getting it in your spirit. You need to ask the Lord before you watch it. Don't watch it first and then say, oh, no, I don't receive that because you did receive it. You received it. And it's going to be somewhere in the back of your mind, even if you try to reject it. Something's going to happen and it's going to remind you of it and you're going to recall it. So some of this stuff you don't even need to watch and subject yourself to. Amen, church. Yeah, I mean, you don't think the devil is still controlling the, 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 the powers of the air? He's the prince and power of the air. So he's putting stuff out there to get you worried, get you all frazzled. Then you email me, well, what you think about this? And I tell folks, I say, I don't think nothing about it because I'm not watching it. Amen. 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 I'm not watching it. I just, I don't have to watch all, everything. Some stuff I just don't, I just don't need to watch. Amen. I got enough watching out for you guys. And my own family and my wife and just watching. I, I ain't got time to be looking for stuff. Amen. I know the devil's out there. Amen. And so I don't need to watch it and you don't. Look at somebody and say, you don't either. Quit putting stuff in your spirit that you can't get out. Amen. Quit putting stuff. These folks will make you think the mark of the beast is here and Folks that's got the shot, there's no hope for them, and you'll be hating your own neighbor, not praying for them. Amen. Amen. Or you think like this other, I saw another bishop, female lady bishop, whatever that is. I saw her saying that she's not praying for unvaccinated people. Why would I pray for you being sick when you could have went and got the vaccine? Yeah, she said that. I have her saying it. What? Yeah. So don't, y'all, yeah, don't, don't, don't fall for this stuff and you keep praying for your brothers and your sisters and your parents. Amen. Don't think they done took the mark of the beast. You're going to know when it's the mark of the beast because there's going to be a beast giving out the mark. Anyway, but see, you keep watching them feeds, and then you're sitting there, well, Pastor, I don't know, it's looking a little bit like the mark. You don't know what the mark looks like. What does the seal of God look like? You want to know what the mark looks like? Look at the seal of God. It's just the opposite of that. What's the seal of God? Is that something physical? No, that's a choice. Seal of God is on you if you believe on him. Anyway, amen. Adamandbeliever.com, I just felt like I needed to say that. Don't be coming to me with no Mark of the Beast questions. I will let you know when it's beastly. <laughs> you pray. Look at somebody and say pray. Well, I mean, we had a great prayer service this past Wednesday. Just prayer. Prayer is important. I'm going to say it now, I ain't talked to elders, I ain't talked to nobody, but in September, I want to cancel Heroes and P31, and every Wednesday, I want to pray. It's five Wednesdays in September. That's five fast, five 
days of prayer, five weeks. We'll come up with a time during the week to pray as well, but fasting every Wednesday in September and coming here for prayer every Wednesday. Let's do that. Amen. Amen. Because we don't know what's going to happen in October. So let's give God September. Amen. That'll be our ABC consecration month. If you need to give it a name. Amen. <laughs> let's do it. Let's, let's do that. That's, that's necessary, I believe. Love him with your life. Part five. Amen. Look at somebody and say, it doesn't matter. Look at somebody and say, your clothes don't matter. Tell them their shoes don't matter. I don't care how fly they are, Landon. And them's is pretty fly. But they don't matter. They don't matter. Look at somebody and say, your car don't matter. I don't care how fly it is. It don't matter. Look at somebody and say, your house don't matter. Come on, look at them and say it. Your bank account don't matter. None of it matters. None of it matters. You one computer glitch away from not having anything. So if your faith is in that, one blackout away from not being able to enjoy any of that. You realize the control they have over us? You worried about that? How you gonna look to somebody else and they crazy? <laughs> People you trying to show out in front of, they don't matter. They don't matter to themselves. You worried about their opinion of you? Man, man, look at somebody and say, it doesn't matter. Ooh, I could stay right there. Solomon taught us in the last lesson last week that you can accomplish everything under the sun and have everything there is to own because he did that. He accomplished everything under the sun and he had everything there was to own. $22 trillion means you have everything and own everything. But because it's under the sun and not above it, it doesn't mean anything <laughs> man y'all better get a grip on this Ecclesiastes 20 11 then I looked on all the works that my hand had wrought and on the labor that I had labored to do and behold all was what vanity and what vexation of spirit and there was there's nothing to be made under the sun no profit under the sun. There's no increase under the sun. If it's under the sun, it, look at somebody say, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Only what we do for Christ has meaning. Remember that old commission song? Only what you do for Christ will last? Church folk didn't like that. Only what we do for Christ has meaning. Not the things we do for ourselves. It may have a temporary meaning to us. But it is all what? Vanity and what? Vexation of spirit. You know, the old church, they used to say, Woo, that, that, that just vexed me. Remember that? Somebody with a demon or something walk in and Everybody could be praising the Lord and you could hear that one voice. Yay! Everybody like, oh. And then you just, you, you're vexed. That vexed me. That annoyed me. What, who is that? Everybody just praising. Thing. You, just, you hear, yay! What? Like it cuts through like a knife. Vexed. You know, and I, you know, I'm from the church where they would stop everything. Stop the music. Stop. Wait, 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 wait. Who is that? Walk right over there to it, cast it out, start the music back up. 
Yeah, you're not going to vex the, the service. Because it's not the person that's bothered, it's the spirit of the Lord that's bothered. It's vexing to us, but it is all vanity and vexation of spirit. Ecclesiastes 2 and 22. For what hath man of all his labor and of the vexation of his heart wherein he laboreth under the sun? What does he have? What does he have of all that he has labored under the sun? When you die, you can't take it above the sun. <laughs> it doesn't, look at somebody say, it doesn't go with you. It doesn't matter. Vexation is a powerful choice of words for the writer of Ecclesiastes. And folks like to... Some folks debate who wrote this, but we know who was the richest man that ever lived. We know Solomon wrote this. Vexation is a powerful choice of words, though, for Solomon to use in Ecclesiastes. This word encompasses the true feelings man suffers when he seeks to achieve earthly goals to impress himself and his neighbors. It's the best word, vexation. It encompasses the true feelings that man suffers when he seeks to achieve earthly goals to impress himself and his neighbors. That's a person that really doesn't have peace. They don't have peace because they won't have peace until people are satisfied with their progress. But people are never satisfied with your progress because it's not their own progress. So you'll never have peace. You're gonna stay vexed. Ecclesiastes 4 and 4, again, I considered all travail and every right work for that this a man is envied of his neighbor. So I considered all the stuff that makes folks want to be like me. Neighbor envying me. Person next door looking out the window. Oh, they got a new car. Mm, they think they something. You know somebody in the house talking to themselves like that? You know, do you know you having a conversation with the devil? You borderline crazy? You in there looking out the window. Mm, let me think of something. I'm going to have to say something about them. Because they think they somebody. And then come to church and worship the Lord harder than everybody. That's the one cutting the rug. I mean, cut it for real. With the high heel. I mean, as soon as the music started. Oh, just gone. Then somebody else jump over there. She trying to show her shoes. Just, that's a vexed person. Yeah, he said, but I considered all that. The travail it takes to do the right thing. Folks envy me and all that. He said, and all of it is what? Vanity and vexation of spirit. Worrying about what your neighbor is doing. And you know, if you worry about what your neighbor's doing, your kids going to grow up and worry even more about what your neighbors are doing. You're going to have some jacked up children. Because you're going to implant that spirit in them. You know, the children are the sounding board. That's where you, you, you let it all out. Uh -huh, they hear you doing it. Then when they grow up, they got a problem. Can I keep preaching in the church house today? Amen. Amen. Well, let's look up this word vexation since we have used it so many times. Vexation. It is the state of being annoyed, frustrated, or worried. So when you have vexation of spirit, you have an annoyed spirit, frustrated spirit, or a worried spirit. These are the things. Annoyed, frustrated, or worried. These are the things that come when you trying to make it trying to flex, trying to be the bomb, trying to prove something to somebody, trying to show them what you have accomplished. You do that publicly, but privately you're annoyed, frustrated, and worried. You know God didn't give it to you. You went and got it. So whenever you get it, you're worried that you won't keep it. 
Whenever you get it, you worry. Whenever it's your strength, you worry. Because you did that. There's no certainty. You're uncertain. You're a phone call away from the boss of not having a job. You're uncertain. So you worry. Can I keep preaching in here? For vain people, there is no escaping the annoyance that comes when people seem to downgrade your goals or belittle your desire to rise above others. You stay annoyed at these people. This irritation leads to hatred and isolation from those that question your abilities and hopes of being prominent. So when you think, when you trying to be something and the people around you are telling you that don't matter, you shouldn't be after that, whatever, you get annoyed with them and you isolate yourself. Then you become that person that don't want to be around other folks. You're going to be around somebody. May not be the other folks, but you know who's going to be around. <laughs> the fool going to be there. Fool ain't going nowhere. Oh, oh, you're going to isolate yourself away from everybody else? Ooh, just like I like it. Man. No one to question me. You sit up in your head annoyed at people. And then when you get annoyed at people in your head, you start thinking people are talking about you. So what do you do when you think people are talking about you? You start talking about them. Now you're basically talking about people because the fool told you to. You don't know for sure if they're even thinking about you. And chances are, if you sit around with that mindset, not many people thinking about you. Especially if you got an isolation spirit, you ain't putting yourself around nobody to think about you. You'll be forgotten. Folk forget you. But this irritation, it leads to hatred. Then you start hating people because you think they talked about you. Because somebody else that hates told them that you, they was talking about you. You got all of these emotions with no real evidence. You're frustrated with no evidence. Just a bunch of feelings. Boy, that's what the devil does. And it leads to hatred and isolation from those that question your abilities and hopes of being prominent. Philippians 2 and 3. Let nothing be done through what? Don't do anything through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind. Let each So you know what this does? This makes you rejoice when somebody else gets something. You can't even hate on them if you esteem them better than yourselves. If you esteem them better than yourselves, that means they deserved it more than you. Oh, I didn't hear I didn't hear a lot of amens. That means they deserve it. You say in your mind they deserve it more than me. And I'm happy for them. You esteem them better. I know I'm preaching. You look like you want to look. And then you think I'm looking at you. <laughs> he looked over at me when he said that. And then, had folks leave this church over there. Just thought I looked and said and didn't like the way I hugged. And the person you hugged before me, you had a special kind of energy. But then when you got to me, if the Lord would let me, I'd let you read the emails, Jack. So you're going to leave because of that? Pastor got his favorites. I'm human. Somebody talking like you, you ain't going to be my favorite. I promise you that. I mean, can I have my choice? Can't fill a church with favorites. <laughs> he 
have those that you know he yes yes I'm just going to be honest with you. They don't need to be fronting. I don't like everybody to say. I love everybody to say. I don't like everybody to say. <laughs> well, what kind of pastor are you? The kind that don't like everybody <laughs> to say. Is that, that right, Dick? I don't like everybody to say. <laughs> Many lead their own children as well as themselves as sheep to the slaughter to gain prominence at all costs. Sacrifice their own children to gain prominence. As a result, many of our young people suffer from anxiety and depression. Philippians 4 and 6, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your quest be made your request be made known to God. You know why he said this? Because you're not going to request to shine in front of others. You're not going to request that from God. You get before God trying to make them kind of requests, you're going to see just how crappy you are as a human. But they mess their kids up. They push their girls to be societal successes instead of wives and mothers. These girls don't have a clue. They don't know how to start a home. They don't know how to be cute. They think slutty is cute. Especially with mama on there. With her own, with post of her own self. Little girl don't know what to think. don't have any skills to be wives and mothers. They push their sons to be rich and famous or famous instead of good and moral fathers and husbands. They get infuriated along the way because of naysay or those that preach against selfish ambition. I become their enemy because I preach against selfish ambition because I don't believe anyone should be driven self-willed. I believe that through prayer and supplication, we're supposed to make our request be known unto God. That means when we get before God, God tells us who we're supposed to be, not society. Amen. And I'm not trying to be on a quest to prove something to someone. We don't tolerate that. We don't have positions here at this church that you can get in so you can get that feeling. Sound doctrine vexes these people's spirit. Man, what kind of person are you when sound doctrine vexes you? Ecclesiastes 2 and 17. Therefore, this is the man that had absolutely everything, all the money that could be got he had. You couldn't even come talk to Solomon unless you had a truckload of gold bullions. They didn't have trucks, but had a chariot full of gold bricks. And they would weigh them bricks. Ah, oh, that's not enough. Go back and get some more before you can talk to Solomon. Y'all think I'm playing? Even the women. He, you, I'm not macking on you unless. Go, go get some gold. I might talk to you. I might get your phone number. I think see them bricks. Show me the money. He had everything. Everything. How many wives? It's a 700 wives and 300 concubines. No, it was the other way around. 300 wives and 700 concubines. He needed that wisdom. It's a lot of folks to remember. <laughs> My goodness, he needed that 22 tree. Hope he had prenups. <laughs> they had prenups back then. <laughs> That's when you get a prenup. 
<laughs> he had everything. He said he did everything. He said he experienced everything under the sun. And this was his conclusion, Ecclesiastes 2 and 17. Therefore, I hated life. How can a man that has absolutely everything hate life? Somebody ain't thinking right now, give it to me. <laughs> I'll show you how to love this life, Jack. 22 tree first, I'm about me. He did that. He started out just like that. He bought him something, got him something. And after all the getting and the getting and the buying, couldn't do anything for his soul. And he says, I hated life. Because the work that is wrought under the sun is what? Grievous. Some of y'all can't handle one woman. A thousand of them, that's grievous. Somebody like, one is grievous. One I got. <laughs> he said, I hated life because the work under the sun is grievous to me. For all is what? Vanity and vexation of spirit. Look at somebody say, it doesn't matter. Mm. Oh, I wish I could get you to see this. This is the American workforce right there. That's what everybody looked like. Right there. Gonna force you to get an experimental shot just to do that. Look at somebody say, it doesn't matter. They're trying to make, they're trying to make you think your life is more important. They're trying to make you think your occupation is more important than your life. What you do, they want you to be a human doing, not a human being. I'm a human being. She ain't gonna force me to do nothing by doing. I'm a human being. I'm human without the job. I'm human without the money. I'm human without the house. I'm human without the cars. I'm what God made me without all of that stuff. Because none of it matters. It's all vanity. Frustration that comes along with vexation cannot be ignored. All of the money, all of the time and dedication it takes to invest in a plan to succeed for vain purposes cannot be calculated. You know, spent your whole life trying to make it somewhere to prove something. Can't even calculate all the money you spent. All the time you wasted. Ecclesiastes 3 and 9. What profit hath he that worketh in that wherein he laboreth? What profit is it? Man, if Christ is not attached to it, I'm sorry. You're doing nothing. Ain't it funny? The movie stars and the athletes, man, people just worship them. Faint when they see them. I remember when I was, at, I was working at Six Flags. I was about... 16, 17. Working at Six Flags and New Edition came. So I wasn't working that day. I was just there that day. But because so many women was fainting, they told me to go get my badge and help to get some of these women faint. They was grown women, Elder. It wasn't the kids fainting. Now, at this time, Ronnie, Bobby, Ricky, and Mike was around 13 or 14 years old. This is before Johnny. And they came out there. Now, I'm sitting on the edge of the stage. I'm a musician, you know. I, I, I was pretty talented around this time, 16, 17. I could play instruments and stuff. So I'm sitting on the side of the stage, and they up there doing I'm Lost in Love. <laughs> and 
And they singing it. And I mean grown women just faint, falling out. Just falling. So I'm looking at the women falling out, and then I'm watching them, and their mouths weren't even going with the, the words. And I was like, so I told my boy that was with me, I said, man, I don't think they can sing. I said, they don't look like they can sing. They had all the moves, you know, they back away from that mic, and they'll tear something up. But when they come up to the mic, when they back up, they just, so I'm sitting on the side, I'm sitting on the side. I said, I don't think they have talent. And women are fainting at some pre-recorded voices. <laughs> they can't sing. As you know you can't sing when they make a movie about you and hire some singers, and people start booking them to come do your songs. It's like, yeah, yeah, we want new edition to come. Oh, okay, well, let me, no, 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 we don't want the original ones. We want them new ones that was on the TV. They sounded great. But anyway, I told you that story because I'm sitting there watching people faint and just pass out because they really thought these little boys was doing something and they weren't doing anything. They weren't doing anything any little boys in the hood couldn't jump up and do. You could get random and just knock on houses, five houses, and pull little boys out, teach them how to dance, and put them in front of the people. That's what they did with them. I think they was playing basketball. And somebody said, hey, come here, y'all. We need some singers. And folks fainting. Ah, just pass it out. But that's what our world deems something. Or a basketball player. Folk go crazy. Ooh, that's so and such. He plays basketball. But he's the greatest. He's the greatest at putting a ball in the hole. A ball in the hole. Because at the end of the day, that's all it is. He may be skilled at it, devil. He may can put it in there more times than others. He may can stop yours from going in more times. But at the end of the day, he's putting a ball in a meaningless, I mean meaningless basket. Can I preach in here? Yeah. Acting. Oh, he's the greatest actor. Oh, I just want to. Why do you want to fake? Because he's acting. Don't you know the better the actor, the less you can trust him? He's fooling everybody, making you think he's somebody else. That's who's great. What profit is it? Can I keep preaching in here? Folks get mad at these kind of messages because they've worked their whole life for their titles. They've worked their whole life to achieve this and that. And they think I'm belittling it. And I am. I am. I'm belittling it because no matter how hard you work, you ain't got what Solomon had. And Solomon said, it's vanity and vexation of spirit. So I'm going with what the Bible says about what you're doing. I know I'm preaching in here. Many must forsake their own wives, husbands, children, family, etc. for the sake of proving their value and worth. It's what this generation is all about, narcissism. They'll stop liking their wives in a heartbeat. Stop liking their husbands to achieve it. Get a divorce like it's nothing. Oh, man. I, no, 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 no. Forget that. No, no, because that's in my way. What? With no consideration of the man or the woman that built you up to that? That was there? The Bible calls the wife of your youth? 
You gonna trade them in for the trophy? Just so you can look good? But they have to forsake it all to prove their value and worth. Solomon was able to buy anything and achieve everything, yet the frustration with life remained. The frustration with life remained. That's why I tell folks, don't divorce. Don't divorce. Because the way you feel right now, you'll feel again in the next relationship. You still gonna have to work it out. Because it's still you. It's you, your spouse, and the fool. You break up with your spouse, it's you and the fool. Get the next relationship, it's still y'all three. Stuff don't feel right again, and oh man, here we go again. Because it's going to happen again. That's life, man. You got to work through things. You can't abandon ship when things aren't good. Can I keep preaching in here? These things do not remove the cares of this life. Instead, they do what? Amplify. Amplify. So when you're on the grind and trying to make it and trying to be this and that, and you're annoyed by your children or your spouse or whatever, and they start feeling like they're holding you back, you just amplify the feeling that wouldn't be so bad if you weren't so narcissistic. Normal people would have just worked that out, but you've amplified it because you're chasing, you're striving. I know I'm preaching. <laughs> I know it's true. <laughs> when you spend your life achieving goals and titles and accolades and statuses and prestige, you will be frustrated with the things that really matter. Did you just hear what I said? You spend your life chasing and striving and trying to be something and show and prove that you something and, 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 and uh, uh, make someone's opinion of you great and, and worried about what people think. You spend your life like that. The things that really matter will it, annoy you. Your wife will annoy you because you don't want to care about her. Your husband will annoy you. You don't want to care about him. Your kids will annoy you. They're in your way. You're annoyed by the things that really matter. The church will annoy you because that little freckle face preacher keeps saying stuff that I'm thinking. He keeps saying, he in my way. He keeps saying this and that. You know, he keeps saying that now, you know. So if you spend your life chasing, man, Striving. Woo! The things that matter are going to feel like they're in your way. And that's what's supposed to matter. Get pregnant. Oh, I can't have this baby. I got to get an abortion. Because the baby don't matter. In your way. This marriage is in my way. Ecclesiastes 5 and 16. And this also is a sore evil, that in all points as he came, so shall he go. And what profit hath he that hath labored for the wind? It's not stable. Anybody ever experienced a stable wind? Wind is never stable. I've been outside at times and wind was blowing one direction. And start blowing the next, the other direction. Just it's wind. That's what your labor's for. That's what your work is for. You will love the you that the world sees, but hate the you that God sees. That's why they don't. This is why they don't like the preacher. This is why they don't like the preacher, because the preacher is preaching what God sees. That bothers a person that's striving to look good in the eyes of others. I mean, you go by their seat after service. Man, all of these fingernails around your chair. What was happening during service? 
Toenails. Why toenails down here? My goodness. What happened over here? Took your foot out and chewed it. Brother. They don't like that message, man. They hate the preacher. Preacher be in there digging. They love the you that the world sees, though. These frustrations will cause you to exchange the logos logic of the word for the irrational logic of the world. Anything and everything in your path will be trampled underfoot to reach your goal. Once you have attained your desire, does God truly get the credit for what you have accomplished? Mark 8 and 36, for what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and what? Lose his soul. The greatest issue with vexation is worry and stress. When we put our children, when we push our children to be successful, you know you're not supposed to push your children to be successful. Look, somebody like, uh, we want them to be successful. Of course you do. But you don't push them to be. No. <laughs> see, let me, let, let me show you how it works. Y'all know how it works? If they see you doing it, they'll do it. They grow up and see it. Sometimes they don't do it right away. Sometimes they got to climb fool's hill and fall. But eventually, it'll set in. They, okay. They saw it. Not by you pushing it. Or forcing it. When I say push, I mean force. Just let them watch you. Nah, let them watch you. But see, people don't want them to watch them because that puts a responsibility on them. <laughs> yeah, you got to give them something to watch. Don't be putting uh, Les Brown books all in their room. And <laughs> You read that book yet? Have you read it? <laughs> but when we push our children to be successful in this life for our own benefit, we also push vexation of spirit upon them. Man, you vex a child's spirit. They're not happy with who they are because somebody's expectation was set too high because it wasn't the expectation for the child. It was the expectation that they didn't reach for themselves. I preach in here. All these slow hand claps. I don't care. I don't care. Oh, oh. Please ask you six and nine. Better is the sight of the eyes than the wandering of the desire. That is what they can see you do it. Then wondering what's going to happen. This is also vanity and what? The worry and stress of not being approved of or loved because they failed to reach a goal set for them causes them to carry things in their bodies. Now, this is where the sicknesses come in. Children with autoimmune diseases and different things. Not all cases, but a lot of cases because of the rejection they feel when they don't live up to the, to, to the expectation. Vexation creates illnesses caused by low self-worth. You will be surprised how living outside of God's plan for you can cause your body to turn on itself. Galatians 6 and 8. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh do what? Reap corruption. But he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap what? It just gave you the formula there. If you chasten, if you strive and you sow into the flesh and your flesh is going to be corrupted.
Look at somebody and say, it doesn't matter. Man, oh, you better stop. Ooh, it don't matter. Almost all autoimmune diseases and neurological issues are linked to self-hatred, worry, stress, and feelings of rejection. Almost all of them. Yeah. Yeah. And, just bec and because of this fact, that means they can be prayed off by someone confessing something. Someone forgiving something. Someone letting something go. You yelled at that child and told them that you hate them or wish they wasn't, wasn't here. And their body started trying to make them disappear. So they end up with an autoimmune response. You got to take that back and repent. When a person feels rejected or unaccepted because of failed goals or societal pressure, their bodies will begin to reject them as well. This leads to all kinds of health issues. Many of us are suffering from health issues right now because of striving and proving our value through goals and dreams that people put in us. Yeah. You're living under the weight of what someone expected of you. Suicidal thoughts and hopelessness are plaguing this generation because of the pressure of succeeding, paying off loans and debts, and failure to gain approval through their accomplishments. Somebody forced their child to get loans and got their children all up under debt to prove something. Now that child is under debt, in debt. And they can't handle the pressure. You can handle the pressure because it ain't your debt. Third John 2, beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest do what? Prosper and what? They go together. Prosper and be in health. They go together. He just put them together. That you may prosper and be in health. So he don't want you in bad health prospering. And he don't want you prospering with bad health. Or good health and you're not prospering. He wants them together. Prosper and be in good health. That means you're prospering God's way. Because his blessings add no sorrow. You won't be sick, didn't it, God's way. When it's God doing it, it adds no sorrow. And nobody can take it from you. Even as thy soul prospers. Summary! Well, praise God. This was a great message. Amen. Why are you living for yourself? Why do you wake up each morning and look at what you have and wonder how you can get more? Why do you look at your bank account every morning? Oh, I know I just stepped on some crusty bunions. You're not going to add more to it by looking at it. Why are you watching your stocks every day? Your cryptocurrency every day. Let's see. I'm coming for you. Oh, just give me a little time. I will be sitting right next to you in just a little bit. You're going to look next to Oh, where you come from? Oh, I'm here. What you looking at it every day for? Look at somebody say, it doesn't matter. <laughs> or do you wake each day wondering which goal you will manifest next? You into the manifesting? Well, you going to manifest it. Has the new world order convinced you that the meaning of life is selfish ambition? So the meaning of life is your life and what you do and what you accomplish. That's the meaning of life to you?
Have you bought into the ideology that you must grind hard daily to prove to the haters that you can do it? You grinding hard to prove to the haters. First of all, they're haters. How do you satisfy a hater? It's in the definition of the name. So no matter what you do, they're going to what? Because they're haters. And you on the grind to prove to haters that hate? Because if they hate, no matter what you do, no happy hater. They hate. <laughs> she thinks she cute in them shoes. Come barefoot. <laughs> Where's her shoes? Maybe your parents set goals for you that caused you to fall in love with the thought of having more than they were able to provide. Parents can accidentally do that. You know, and I, hey, they can accidentally do it. Give your parents a pass. They want it better for you than themselves. But sometimes they will implant strive in you and over push the issue just to make sure you don't end up like they did. And that can be hurtful as well because you love them the way they were. Yeah. Amen. We are, uh, mama, you ain't daddy. You're not proving nothing to me. All is forgiven. Whatever happened. I just want to love you because you're here. You gave me life. So the rest don't matter. So let's push that to the side. I don't, I, hey, don't push me to be better than you. I want to be like you. Yeah. Or maybe society influenced them to push you so that they themselves could benefit. And that's bad too. Well, I'm here to tell you that in a short while, guess what? None of what you have done or accomplished will matter. I mean, it's coming. It's just like a space movie. They land on that planet and everybody's wearing the exact same thing, get the exact same wage, live in the exact same place. All of them, just everything's the same. That's coming. <laughs> she said, Democrats. <laughs> That's coming. Ain't even that. Marxist. Them Black Lives Matter folk y'all was following. They're Marxists. That's what Marxists believe. Your degrees. The ones that cost you them the 22 trillion. Because <laughs> that's what it felt like to you when you see the, 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 the stub. It might as well be 22 trillion. <laughs> it might as well. I'm cl as close to 22 trillion as I am. All these zeros on this statement. <laughs> but all your degrees. And it's so weird. You get that degree because you feel like it's going to make you feel a certain way. And it don't change. You working with a dude that has a college, I mean a high school diploma. He's right next to you, making what you make. He's right there. You see him every day. Well, let me back it up a little bit. 80% of all the businesses that are owned in America are by high school graduates, not college graduates. So you basically are working for the high school graduate to pay the loan that you got to get the degree. He don't have no loans because he started that business straight out of high school. Yeah. 
Steve Jobs, everybody, half the folk in here got an iPhone. More than half, probably, if you're smart. The smart half. <laughs> Somebody said, there you go. <laughs> so you got that iPhone. Yeah, you got that iPhone. You using a phone in school, you read in school, getting the notes from a dude. <laughs> he went to college, but he didn't enroll. He didn't want to pay for it. He didn't want to go into debt because he wanted to use his money to start Apple. So he just went and sat in on the classes. Sometimes he didn't even have shoes on. He sat in on the classes. You know what that means though? And you know, Steve Jobs was Steve Jobs. He worshiped weird stuff and he was visited by an alien. The alien gave him iOS and all that. I know all of that, I know. But I, I, I have an admiration for him in a lot of areas. Because for him to go sit in class and not enroll, that means he doesn't care what nobody thought. That means that I'm going to get the education you got. Now, I'm not going to be able to brag about it because I'm not going to have proof. But he didn't care. I educated myself, Jeff. Yeah, they tried to give me honorary degrees and everything because of all the study I've done. I did that myself because I didn't want to go in debt. Some kid gonna go home, see you, mama. <laughs> Pastor said, we can do this ourselves. <laughs> nah, baby. <laughs> you go get that book and read. You go to class. <laughs> That's not for everybody, amen. Y'all smart enough to know that, right? Okay. okay. But it don't matter what I've learned, what you've learned, none of it matters. Not like that. Now, if you want a good job, then you need to know what to do when you get there. Amen. You need to know what to do. And if you want to move up in a company, you need to study something. You got to study something. You can't watch Games of Thrones every night and move up in your company unless you work for Netflix. HBO. Is it HBO? See, I don't watch it. Whatever it is, whatever it's on. You ain't an actor on there watching that study and that's not going to get you anywhere. Make you weird. So yeah, study, work on your way up, all of those things. But at the end of the day, the day is coming very soon where none of it's going to matter. They're going to tell you what to do. This is what we're going to pay you. Now get out there and do it. See, the thing is, we've lived in freedom so long, we forget that freedom don't last long. Man, I just preached. Go, go, you, you don't know history, see? You missed a few days during the history lessons, and you just haven't really paid attention. Every five, four hundred, five hundred years, this happens. Freedoms leave, and people get enslaved. The earth is not that old. You better quit believing these paleontologists. Folks telling you the world is millions and gazillions years old. No, 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 no. A few thousand years old. So that means it comes around pretty quick. Every few hundred years. Just a few hundred years ago, black folks couldn't be sitting in here right now. Just a few hundred years ago. And that's happened all over the world, not just with blacks. Everyone's been enslaved. So now it's time for the free folks to experience non-freedom. And just because you got used to it don't mean it can't end. <laughs> Especially when everything you own is tied to somebody else that worships Satan. So your degrees one day, your titles, your finances, your prestige, your prominence, your positions. One day, nothing will matter. I'm almost done, but this is, 
The devil is leveling the playing field in our world because this is the only way he can rule humanity. Please pay attention. No one can be high but him. He's the devil. Who's going to be high when the devil's in charge? The devil's not in charge right now because the power of God is here. He's going to always be threatened by the power of God. He can get the biggest, giantest robot monster he could think of. And it could step right down the street, walk and scare everybody. And if you got the power of God, you can walk up to it and say, in the name of Jesus. Devil still got to contend with the power of God. That's why I'm staying on this side over here, Elder. Yeah, yeah. So as long as the power of God is here, he ain't in charge. But when he's in charge, which he's working on now, no one can be high but him. No one can have influence but him. No one can stand out but him. He is the devil, remember? Who are you going to share that with? He's the devil. He is the orchestrator of envy and jealousy. So what got, kicked, got him kicked out of heaven in the first place. He is envy and jealousy. He will not share. He will not promote. He will not acknowledge or revere. He will only seek and destroy. He is coming for all those that have selfish ambition in their hearts. He is coming for everyone that chooses self over God. Those who believe that their accomplishments in this life are worth dying for will be his army. This is why we must fall out of love with the world and love God with what? Our lives. Amen. Amen. We must not allow the things of this world to cause us to miss God. Nothing we achieve in this life is worth dying for other than the cause of Christ. We must forsake our way for his way. We must choose him over things. We must let go of the selfish ambition and grasp hold to his almighty hand. Success in this life is God's creation roles and not man's societal expectations. To please God, we must function in our roles and walk according to his plan and not our own. The choice is yours today. Will you choose to love him with your life or love your life more than him? Matthew 6 and 19 tells us, Jesus says, lay not up for yourselves treasures upon the earth where the moth and rust doth corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourself treasures where? In heaven. You're not spending eternity here. So why would you want the treasures here? If your goal is to spend eternity in heaven wouldn't you want the treasure there like the old deacons used to sing sending up my timber I'm sending up my timber <laughs> hit that note <laughs> sending up the timber I'm building something not here I'm sending the wood up because that's where I'm going to spend eternity. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither the moth nor rust doth corrupt and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will what? Your heart be also. Everyone stand to your feet. Where your treasure is, where your money is, where your mind and your money is, that's where your heart is. So God is wanting us to pull our affections out of this world and invest them in him. Sounds easy to do, but it's not. Because we've all been, to a certain degree, programmed and influenced by society. So some things we hold pretty dear and they shouldn't even matter. Those are the things God is coming for. So if you got something like that, you know, hey, I need to be able to let this stuff go. I don't want to hold this stuff anymore that dear. 
I don't want it to matter to me. Just like it didn't matter to Solomon, I don't want it to matter to me. I want the only thing to matter to me is God's will. If that's you, I want you to just come up, and we're going to believe God together in here. Whatever it is. I think that, is that everybody? Okay, then stay where you are. <laughs> everybody looking like, ain't going to be room. <laughs> Yeah, so that's what we're going to pray. We'll just pray it collectively. Everyone bow your heads. We'll just pray that. Believe God for that. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for a message like this and a time like this. We thank you because you still speak to us. We thank you, God, because you're still dear to us. We thank you, God, because you look beyond our faults and you see our needs, God. We are faulty. We're faulty humans. We're faulty. We make error. We make mistakes. We do things we shouldn't. Father God, we've, we've uh, brought things into our lives that shouldn't be. We cherish it more than we should. Even the things that can be in our lives that are lawful, sometimes we love those things too much. Sometimes we put those things before you. So we're asking you, God, for grace and mercy in this hour. God, to sort through our lives. Sort through our lives. The things that don't belong, God, take them away. The things that shouldn't be, Father God, remove them. Father, we pray right now, look into our hearts. No matter how we've been, no matter how long we've been this way, help us, God, to let go of the world and love you with our lives. Come on, lift your hands up. Father God, help us in this hour as we sort through the chaos, we sort through all of the things that are happening, all the things that they're saying, all of the things that are going on, all of this foolishness and all of the drama, the just everything that's happening in this world as we sort through it God be with us be with us be with us tell us what we need to let go of tell us who we need to let go of remove that remove the source of it keep us in your way keep us in your care Father God and help us Lord to not hold anything in a higher regard than you help us God not to lift anything up above you help us God to keep the right perspective and love you with our lives and God we're going to praise you we're going to give you glory we're going to give you honor we're going to believe and trust in you in this hour in Jesus name we pray amen amen hallelujah Come on, give God some praise. Let it go. Look at somebody and say, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Look at somebody and say, no matter how much it matters, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Come on, Elder.